Want to start recording here? Yeah. Awesome. Recording here, too. All right. We're starting right now. We're starting the Answers Unleashed radio show. I'm excited to do this, so we're going to count up in a little bit. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you okay. We're, we're about to start. Okay. We're about to start in a couple of seconds. Four, three, two. Welcome to Answers Unleashed, a talk show to help you reshape your brain with science and faith so you find the answers in front of you. I am your host, Olympia LaPointe. Now, I'm excited. This is Tuesday. No, the reason why this is so exciting, and if you are here in the United States, you know why. We are voting today. It's a part of our democratic process in being able to speak up for what we desire and what we want. In today's episode of Answers Unleashed, we talk about all sorts of things from topics to how to reshape your brain with science and faith so you find the answers in front of you. And we have expert guests, but we also have topics that will change your perspectives, will allow you to see new things in new ways, and it's all brought to you from my book, Answers Unleashed, The Science of Unleashing Your Brain's Power. Today's episode is specifically about voting. Now, there's there's a whole process of this voting. And, and to give you a little bit of background, the voting process is not only important within what you do as a civic engagement to help the democratic process across the United States or in any country that you belong to that has a democratic process. Because I know we have a lot of listeners here from uh, South Africa, a lot of listeners from the UK, a lot of listeners from France. So this still applies for any of you. But the voting process isn't just as important within the civic and and the governmental communities. It is important in your life as well. You literally vote on what you want to happen in your life. It's not just in your government, but in your life. So today's episode is one, understanding the concept of voting and how does that turn out in, in the importance of that. Two, how do you vote in your own life? And three, the power and significance of taking action in your voting power to change not only your the government, but also the life that you live on a daily basis. Are you excited back there? I'm looking at my, uh, yeah, I'm looking at my uh, program directors. We always are here every single week on Answers Unleashed at the Cape pcradio.com uh, site. This is a educational site built by Pierce College students. So I'm so thankful for your support back there. Yeah. All right. Do you know about voting? And do you know how important it is that uh, that people vote across the United States? If you don't know how important it is, I'm going to give you a, a basic breakdown history. Now, I'm not a historian. I do not know all the dates and all the people and all the influences, but I know the basic story and I want to share it with you because a lot of people, you may not know this story and how important it is. All right. If you are here in the United States, I'm going to share with you what our basic government is about. The United States was formed and it was broken. It was formed by a group of settlers that broke away from the UK government and form their own government here in the United States. And it has a several part feature. There's a president, there's a uh, federal ju- the uh, judiciary uh, branch, there is the, the senators. We have three basic parts of our government and it was actually formed, the structure f- to, was formed from the Protestant church, the structure that we have from the Protestant church. Did you guys know that? So this structure was used to form, from the Protestant church, was used to form the governmental structure of the United States. And so it had three branches of government. And these branches of government was formed by democracy, meaning that people who had the ability to, one, own land, and were men, and were Protestant men, and these were white men at the time, in 1776, the United States was formed, and this democracy was formed based on you having the right to vote if you own land, if you were a male, if you were a white male, and if you were a Protestant male, period. So everyone else was left out. 
it, women were left out. If you weren't Protestant, you were left out. If you didn't own land, you were left out. And all this building of this country took place over several different centuries. In the, seven, in the 1700s, in the 1800s, in the 1900s, there was all this building of the United States, and it was built based on slave labor, basically. The, a lot, the, the country was separated into two parts. The parts that built itself off of the work of the people that already lived here in the United States. And the second part was built off of slave labor. People that hired, well, not hired, people that bought, uh, people of color, like myself and, and uh, many other people, bought people of color to work for them to build their companies. And so when we had the Civil War, that was a separation between the two parts of the United States government, the one that part of the government that believed in uh, creating uh, labor for the American citizens, and the other was creating labor only for the people who could afford it. Hmm. So it was the Civil War was based on, it wasn't based on slavery, it was actually based on financial uh, concerns. And through that, the United States merged, had a civil war, and it rose above that, and it created a gigantic uh, uh, a country with this power to be able to speak up. Now, in in this process, the in nineteen well nineteen twenties, we had uh, a change. Actually, in eighteen sixty three was the Emancipation Proclamation that ended slavery. And then it unified all the different financial structures of the of the country. And then in the 1920s, we saw women. Women began to realize their power in the government. Now, women, if you know this now, in the United States, women make up more than 50% of the population here in the United States. So the women in 1920s recognized, wait, 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 we are now in this environment where we're starting to work. We are starting to have a voice in how we think things should be run. And so previously, before women could not vote, people of color could not vote. So you saw in the 1920s and 1930s, women marching like there was no tomorrow to be able to cast their vote, just like the men that owned property. Mm. Isn't that deep? So the the women created a movement, and so the women eventually were able to vote. Now, it wasn't completely fair. We had only people of certain descent able to vote. Like, for example, people of color was not able to vote. And you saw there would be there a big civil rights movement in the 1960s. Now, some of you may be too young. You may not know this. Some of you do know this. But in the 1960s, there was a large civil rights movement, and it was led by Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was a person who uh, followed Gandhi, and he was a person who looked at spirituality in the sense of the uh, church to define a movement that was going to be a peaceful movement to show the significance and the worth of the people's voices who were not white individuals, but were people of color. And before there were Jim Crow laws here in the United States that separated people of color and people who uh, were white. And it was called Jim Crow laws. For example, my mother told me a time when she was younger where they could not go into the mall down the street because only white people were allowed in the mall. She told me about when they drove across country to some of the different southern states. Uh, she, my mother was, uh, my mother is a mixed person. But if you were not all white, you were considered a person of color. And so she and her family would travel to different places and they could not go into a restaurant to eat. So this was Jim Crow's laws, and Jim Crow laws did not offer the same type of laws for people of color that it did for, for white women and white men. Now, Martin Luther King, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. saw a new future, which was people deserve the right to be able to speak up and cast their vote and be a part of society given the fact that they are living beings, human beings in the same environment. And so we saw a movement of people who got up 
and helped people across the entire uh, United States who were driven, driven to provide a voice to people who could not vote on their own. So you had white men come and and stand up. You had white women come and stand up. You had Jewish men and, and women come and stand up. You had all sorts of people from every single background, a part of this movement in the 1960s that transformed the entire United States. Now, if any of you are from South Africa, you know the uh, ending of apartheid. That is a similar type of situation that happened here in the United States, but in the 1960s. See, the whole reason why it was so monumental during this time frame in the 1960s, what are we now almost in? Can you believe it? We're almost in 2020s. Can you believe it? Ah! <laughs> that is just so crazy. That, so how long ago was that? The, that's 40. That was almost, what, what 60 years ago? The, the civil rights movement was only 60 years ago. So a lot of you who are watching this may not know that history. I encourage you to Google civil rights movement so you can find out about Dr. Martin Luther King. You can find out about the movement. I'm not doing it justice to giving you this overall view, but I am sharing with you the whole major point. The reason why this movement was so critical is because you saw both love and hate rise up in such a profound way across the United States that it shocked people to their core to be on two sides of the fence. Either they were going to stand up for people who didn't have the same rights, or they were going to allow hate and bigotry comments and bigotry actions like Jim Crow separate the humanity of the United States. Isn't that deep? So, People had to make a choice, and the way they made a choice is through voting, movements, marching. They came forth and they said, it doesn't matter if we're, if we're not black, it doesn't matter if we're not uh, a person of color, we stand for human rights, and we're going to stand up for all the human rights. And so this movement was built on that. So eventually, eventually after all this movement, after there were many, many, many people who died, literally died, fighting for your right to vote, after there were not hundreds, but thousands of people who died, so you could cast your ballot today, because of their actions, you and I actually have a voice here in the United States. And it's no different right now. You see, every human being that lives on the face of this planet has a voice. Now, we are fortunate we're here in the United States where we have democracy. Not all countries are like that. Every single country is different based on their governmental structure. Middle Eastern co countries are, do not have the same structure as the United States. So depending on each place you go, there's different customs and there's different ways in which people have rights. In the United States, there are rights for white people. There are rights for people who are non-white. There are rights in every single area, as well as there, because of the uh, last administration, the governmental administration uh, under uh, President Barack Obama, we had rights given to uh, all sorts of communities, including the LGB uh, community that's out there. Uh, and because of this, because of this, people are seen as human beings. Now, let's break this down about the right to vote. See, I I was just at uh, I was just at the Oro Shop yesterday. Shout out to the Oro Shop in Santa Monica. They have these great things. I'm going to pull this out for you. They have these great stones. Uh, one stone is here that they. So, and these stones, if you know anything about me, I'm a very spiritual person. I believe in healing stones. So this is a healing stone here and it helps. Uh, this one helps with creativity. That's a, a cool one here. And let me show you this one. Now, if you're listening on the radio, you can't see this, obviously. So I encourage you to go to facebook.com slash Olympia or answersunleashed.com slash podcast to see what I'm doing. And this is another stone, and this is supposed to bring prosperity. And I'm a, I'm a firm believer in science, and I'm also a firm believer in energy work and healing uh, with using the natural energy that is actually in the earth and in our mind. So it's it, my practices are quite unique, and it it helps people, including myself, overcome so many different things. 
And I was at the shop yesterday. And I was asking him about these two stones and what they're used for and what they do. And, and they're just simply beautiful, by the way. They're just simply beautiful. And I was finding out about uh, chakras. And, and if you follow Eastern medicine, you know about chakras. There's uh, several different chakras. But specifically, I was blown away by this this uh, intense area. And we have to do a completely other show on and healing and chakras and, and have someone come in who's an expert on that because it's so cool. That type of healing is just so cool. But I found out that we have several different types of chakras, but specifically we have a root chakra, which is like at the very base of our spine, like in our pelvis area, uh, like uh, our groin area. That's, that's the energy that exists in every single person in that area. And we also have several different chakras, but we also have a throat chakra. Chakra, and it's the chakra that uh, generates energy from expression. And what I found out yesterday is that the two of them are related. If we feel unsafe, we don't speak up. However, if we feel safe, we speak up. But the counter is true. If we speak up, we activate safety. So, for example, if you are, are really stressing out about something, you don't feel safe and, and you don't feel uh, great about something, typically you will lock up in your body. You will lock up actually in your groin area or you'll lock up uh, completely uh, in the bottom part of your body and you don't know why. Part of you unlocking and healing yourself is speaking up, using your throat, using your natural expression to be able to tell how you feel about things. And so when you're able to tell how you feel about things, the two chakras actually combine together and unleash healing for yourself. And so you actually start to feel more safe in environments and you unlock down here in your pelvis. But the, the, this is how crazy this is. But so cool. When you vote, when you speak up, that's the way that you speak up in democratic societies. When you voice your opinion and specifically when you step up and you vote and voice your opinion in a structured manner that creates a form of governings, governing model for a society, you create safety for everyone who is in it. You not only create safety for yourself, you create safety for everyone who is in it. The same is true. If you don't vote, if you don't speak up, if you don't make it out there to the polls, if you do not stand up for every single type of, of concern that is out there and voice your opinion, if you don't do that, if you don't make it out to the polls, you, my friend, are making it unsafe and unlivable for yourself and other people. I I, I was prof I was profoundly impacted by that uh, concept because uh, if you know anything about what I do, I teach. I teach as a math uh, professor, uh, and I love teaching. And I remember asking the class one time, I, I asked them to vote. It was a simple question. I said, would you, what would you like? Would you like to go over group work today and do that on the board? Or would you like to cover some new material and go over group work tomorrow? Simple question. Simple. Uh, uh, we were going to do both, but the question is, what would people prefer to do first? And so I gave the entire class an opportunity to vote, to share their thoughts. The craziest thing happened. I looked around the room and there was around 40 people in the room. I looked around the room, around 10 people raised their hand on wanting to vote, I mean, want, to, voting for going over the group work assignment that day. Then I looked around the room and I said, how many people want to go over the group assignment another day and cover some more information? And there were 11 hands that were raised during that period. Now, if you add these two together, 10 and 11, that's what 21, that wasn't the entire people in the class. See, the people that did not raise your hand literally were giving their rights to away to other people to make a decision for them. And if you know anything about my writing and Answers Unleashed, uh, The Science of Unleashing Your Brain's Power, you know that I talk about the importance of a decision. 
What a decision does in your brain is it triggers your brain to reshape and create innovative processes for yourself. But each time you do not take the opportunity to make a decision and choose to do something new and actually go off and, and create something new for yourself, each time you procrastinate and you don't make a decision, guess what? Your brain doesn't shape and you don't find innovative solutions in your life. Each time that you do not speak up and make a decision off of anything that you are presented with, when you delay that decision, you are delaying your brain power. If you don't vote, you are delaying your prosperity. Isn't that deep? That's deep. It, it, it came to me and I was like, woo, that's deep. So the question is, how does the voting process work? Now, let me share this with you. The voting process works because the majority of the people, whether it be two thirds of the vote or the, the majority of the vote, defines the people who will be in leadership. When you vote, you define the people who will represent the majority of the beneficial humanitarian based concerns that exist. And the same thing actually goes in your own personal life. And let me break this down for you really deep. And I, if you follow me on Edges and Leaves, be prepared. I'm going to go down real deep with you. Are you ready? All right. Your life, you're not just one person. You are several people wrapped up into one. I remember going out uh, with a friend to dinner, and he is a CFO of a large bio, Swiss, Switzerland-based biotech company, and we were having dinner the other night, and uh, it was great. It was a great, great opportunity to talk to him and find out about his business practices and, and learn about what he does, and he looked at me, and he says, this is amazing what you do on uh, getting out there. It's, it's, your personality is, is different, and he goes... Uh, that you're you're completely different right now at eating dinner than you are usually that that on how you perform it that's not you and I looked at him and I said oh yes that's me <laughs> that's definitely me that's just another side of me you see we each have different sides of us and these different sides of us are formed during extreme ex situations that happen in our lives for example, if something really bad happens in your life when you are nine years old, your personality is actually defined a little bit by that nine-year-old and your job in the rest of your life is to grow that nine-year-old up so it's not looking at that catastrophic situation. Let's say your parents got divorced when you were 12 years old. You then became a little stuck at 12 years old and you think things are sometimes going to be like that terrible situation. But the thing is true on the other hand too. You could be 25 years old and land into a job you really love and realize this is what I want to do and how I want to help people. And you are defined by that moment in time where you realize what your gifts are. Each part of you is a certain age and each of you are combining together to create your personality. You have different sides of you. If you don't listen to the, all the different sides of your being, you, my friend, you are not voting in your own life. If you ignore the part of you that feels uncomfortable every single time he looks at you a certain way or demeans you, you are not being a person who votes in your own life. If you are a person who ignores the passion that you have towards a certain career and you are sticking yourself in, forcing yourself to be in a dead end job because that's what you think is gonna work, you, my friend, are not voting for your success. You see, voting is an outward measure of looking at the overall well-being of a, of a government. But the government just isn't within a nation. It is within you. 
You govern yourself as an adult. You make decisions as an adult. You find out what is the most beneficial, beneficial decision for you as an adult. And your job is to move on that decision and to create an innovative path so you can create success for yourself. But when you don't vote, when you simply look at other people to make their decisions for you. When you expect someone else to go out to the polls because you're feeling tired. When you expect someone else to make a vote in the classroom because you just can't make up your mind. When you don't listen to all the different parts of you where you feel uncomfortable as well as as ecstatic about particular things. When you don't listen to that. When you don't listen to all the parts of you, when you don't have that ability to speak up and you don't choose it, you allow shame to shut you down. And what shame does is it blocks off any type of innovation, any type of faith, any type of ability to be able to see a future beyond what you can see right now. And it shuts that down so you cannot create success for yourself. So what do you do? How do you vote not only in a government, but how do you vote in your own life? All right. First things first. If you are in a state right now who is voting and you haven't registered, you may be in a state where you can go to the polls right now and register the same day as you vote. To find out, go to uh, facebook.com slash Olympia LaPointe. I actually posted something up online today for you to take a look at where your particular voting location is. That's number one. Two, find out about the different measures. There's so many different people that help you. For example, I called, um, uh, we have a congresswoman. I almost called her doctor. She feels like a doctor, but uh, a Congresswoman Maxine Waters. Uh, I personally called up uh, that office and just found out how the particular congressperson was voting. You see, you can find out how people vote and you can still make a decision if you will vote the same way or differ. You, you don't ever have to follow exactly how someone else thinks. You can always create your own way of thinking. And you can always vote the way that you feel best in your life. Third thing, this is what you can do. Listen to yourself. Each time you don't know what to do or how to make a decision, just pause for a second and think about where a particular feeling or thought is coming from and at what age do you think it originated. And you literally have to sit down as if, if you can imagine this, this is really cool, if you can imagine all the different sides of you sitting down in a room talking to you, where you're the leader, you're the president of all your different personalities in front of you, from all the different cool things as well as all the different kind of crazy things that happen in your life. And you ask, what's best? What's best for me to do right now? You literally ask yourself, what's going to benefit me, all of us? What's going to benefit us? You by the by you doing that by you actually asking yourself and by you checking in with yourself, you unify yourself to be one leader. It doesn't matter all the different parts of you that exist, but when you check in with yourself and you ask what's best at this moment, you unify yourself so you create the one leader that is powerful across the world. So if you have a pen and paper, I want you to write down how you feel your particular government can turn out. And it doesn't matter if you're here in the United States and it doesn't matter how, uh, what country you're in, I still want you to do this. Take a piece of paper and write down on the paper how you see your government, how you see your world in the next 10 years. Whatever you see, whatever it is that you would like to see, write that down. The way you create that, the way you create the future that you want for yourself is that whatever it is that you wrote down on that piece of paper, 
You vote in that direction in yourself as well as voting in that direction for people who embody those characteristics who can bring that forth. For me, I love education and I love health. Uh, if you haven't figured this out, so the answers on Leisha is always talking about mental health and being able to rewire your brain with thoughts using science, using faith, using the tools that we have through an educational process. So you know what I talk about is, is uh, science, it's psychology, it's faith, it is being whole, being healthy. And educating yourself on how to become healthy no matter what age you're at. So my, what my governing structure is creating a, a environment that is supportive and healthy of constant growth and change and beneficial innovation that will produce lucrative uh, products as well as create the environment for people's lives to be enhanced. So whatever I do, I keep that in the back of my head. What am I doing in my own head and with my own actions and my own decisions to make that happen and have that come forth in my own life so I govern my own life? So as I create those characteristics in myself with those decisions, I look for people who can carry those type of characteristics out in their own lives how do they live their lives and what decisions do they make in representing the values that i hold dear when you keep that in your mind my friends when you recognize the values that you have and the values that you bring to the table for the next 10 years through your own government structure through your own voting process you then are able to decipher and pick and vote for people who cherish those values that bring them to the table for you as well so do you know what i'm looking on my uh, thing I, I thought i had I voted and my sticker fell off. Isn't that crazy? My sticker fell off. I had a voting sticker that said you voted and I was so happy to show it, but then it fell off. So trust me on this. I voted today. I hope you vote too. And I hope that you enjoy this show on Answers Unleashed. And for more shows, always check us out on AnswersUnleashed.com and uh, check us out on KPCRadio.com. You're always, always able to check us out uh, and ask us questions on 888-88-ANSWERS. And uh, find me on Facebook.com slash Olympia LaPointe. You never know. Your question may be answered on air. I am Olympia LaPointe, and it has always been a pleasure to be with you here on Answers Unleashed. I'll see you next time.